Well, today on Nation, a Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about shops, workspace, getting your own place, and when is it time. So, if you're a window cleaner or a small service business, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. It's been going on for seven and a half years, every single week. Tons of content. Go back, listen, watch. Uh, it's on YouTube, but it's also everywhere you can listen to podcasts. Uh, and yeah, make sure to follow it. Uh, if it's not your first time here, thanks for coming back. Really genuinely appreciate it. Uh, put content out all the time. Hopefully I can help you or just, you know, give you something to think about. So anyway, so... Today we're talking about shops, and this is kind of one of those things that a lot of people want, and a lot of people know that it would make things better, but they don't really know the intricates. I didn't. I know that. Uh, A little backstory. I've had storage units. I've used my own garage, and then uh, we bought our first commercial property, uh, 3,500 square feet uh, with offices, a second floor, and uh, all internal parking is what we ended up buying and uh we got a really good deal on it it was phenomenal when it came up and i'm extremely happy that we did it but the first two years of having it was not great and the reason is because i just was stupid and didn't really really look at it and then going into season it was it was a very expensive thing to have when I didn't, I just didn't understand. So I figured I'd talk about it. Everybody wants to talk about getting kind of, you know, a place. A lot of you have storage units, by the way. Uh, If you're watching, share the content on Facebook, pick a group, and uh, talk about your place. I'd love to hear it. Um, But uh, a lot of you have storage units. We ran a storage unit first, then we got an RV storage unit, which are really tall doors and very long pass-throughs. Um, that was nice because we ended up having, um, uh, a truck for pressure washing that was like, had a 27, 27 foot, 21 foot box bed. Anyway, it was long, very, very long truck, uh, F550. And it was really nice to have. And then I realized that there's so many more things that you could do kind of with space that make it really, really nice, like incredibly nice to have and that's what I want to talk about if you don't think that you're needing a space that could very well be but a lot of us kind of want to we just don't know when so anyway let's just stop jump right in is it time to get a space and this part comes in if you're just you if it's just you cleaning windows you don't necessarily need a place you could use your garage Right. If you use your garage in its entirety, you can talk to a tax advisor. Don't listen to some dummy on YouTube, but you can then charge uh, and write that off as a workspace, just like a home office. That works fine. But once you start getting employees, the hard part is, is a how do you interview somebody? You go to a coffee shop. A lot of us do that. Go to a coffee shop, meet them, interview them. But then when they come and show up for work, do they park in front of your house and then take the work truck or or what, right? That's where it starts getting kind of messy. But just the inconvenience of having an extra car on your street isn't enough to justify thousands of dollars a month in a, a actual office space or um, commercial space. But having a storage unit may be. Now, if you have a storage unit that's big enough for a vehicle, single vehicle, um, and you have just one truck, like a work truck, you don't want to keep it in your driveway and have the people come pick it up, you can actually have that usually run out of a storage unit if you put the storage unit is big enough to have a pull-in for a vehicle and then some shop space for like a table for screening and you know you can keep all your supplies. It's really, really nice to have a space just separate. But you don't actually need that. If you're in an area where you don't mind that a car or two either sit in your driveway or on your property or you have your work cars kind of in the back, 
And then when your employees come, they can kind of park and it's not really congestion, you know, adding congestion to your neighborhood. Then it's not bad. Remember, like there are benefits to it, but it's a dollar thing. So it's like, okay, do the benefits outweigh your costs, basically. And I have to say, in hindsight, we could have ran a little longer out of our house, but as soon as I had a work truck there and we had people parking, it would congest, our street was very small. So for us, just the inconvenience, I didn't, no neighbor ever brought it up to me. I know a lot of you have neighbors that are be like, you know, hey, I see you have work trucks. They're trying to bring it up to you. I never had that. But when everybody left, and if I went outside, my office was there. So what was really weird, and I'll give you a kind of an example. Now, I had employees, the same guys, for a very long time. So like we knew them very well. But what was funny was that the timing, so between, say, 8 and 8.30, my wife was already dressed, ready. Like when we had kids, that was like, you know, that was the time where there was, a, because the guys would show up between 8 and then they would leave by 8.30, prep and everything. And they would just show up at my house and come in the back door, walk through my kitchen, down my hall, into my office, sit down. Be like, cool, what are we doing today? So there was always like people in our house that weren't family, which was not as weird as you think, but probably was for her, right? She knew she couldn't just be walking around in like her pajamas or you know, whatever, she kind of always knew timing wise and with the kids and everything by like, you know, before eight, they would kind of, you know, go into one of the rooms to play and stuff so that they weren't, you know, walking around through family time. That's one thing that was kind of weird to have, but that didn't necessarily make it enough to go into the shop. But when I ended up having two trucks, I had two trucks in my driveway, plus my vehicle, plus my wife's vehicle. They were lettered, logoed, wrapped, and then I now had four vehicles parking there. Like, it just got to be too much. So we started with a storage unit. Single storage unit, I had that for like two months, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. All I can do is park a car in there, and that's like it. So then we got the uh, pass-through one, and I could have more vehicles, but the price went up. And then at a certain point... I said, okay, all the benefits that I'm getting from this place, now I can do rescreening. I can do interviews for new techs. They have places to park. I have places to put the vehicles. I have places to do oil changes on the vehicles. Now all the equipment can come off the trucks and sit in certain designated areas. I can have backups for everything. I can have bins for extra rubber and channels, and I have a stack of where all, or a, a spot where all my stack ladders would go and all my water fed goes here my poles are hung here and i have organization which makes things so much faster and speeds things up but i didn't have enough room so when the commercial property came up it was fantastic i mean spacing was great i could park vehicles there even the big ones pass through we ended up putting uh in-house water with float tanks we could fill for pressure washing it was great to get to that point, it's on you. If you have the money in your profits, you do your numbers and it makes sense, absolutely do it. You'll never, you'll never hate having the space, but it's expensive. So let's talk about the costs. The things that I didn't know cost, I mean, I knew, but I just didn't really pay attention to, was that when you have a shop space, so say you buy it, you have your taxes, your insurance, and your mortgage, basically. And you go, oh yeah, that's, that's doable. It's a lot of money, but it's doable. Okay, so let's plan this. Winter comes, do you have an extra $5,000? That's the tricky part is that you have to budget through the rest of the year. Now, I bought it in a fall, prepped everything, and I moved in in like October. Not great because winter was very tricky to kind of make all of that cheddar but what i didn't realize is that i also needed a dumpster because uh for gutter cleaning you know we got leaves we bring them back with us dump them in the dumpster just office refuse and you know waste cans and there's bathrooms so there's i needed a dumpster so that's a price i needed internet i need to pay for heat i need electricity water then of course sewer those are the basics and having a place on top of all that 
There's extras, like maintenance of it. There's uh, replacements of things. There's all of those other pieces that you don't really realize. So when you get your mortgage, your taxes, and your insurance on the property, those three, double that for just like extra costs, just so you know kind of what goes into it. Now, I could have done it maybe without a dumpster. I mean, sure, that's you know 50 to to $100 a month. Not a big deal. Not the end of the world. But when it adds up into little pieces, and by the way, not $50. I don't think you could get a dumpster for 50 even if it's small. But when you start adding all those pieces, that's where you're like, okay, here's the chunk I need. Now, if it costs you, say, $7,000 a month to have everything you need in this place, the efficiencies for that don't necessarily increase by $7,000 right away, right? But now I can do screening in-house, I have a place for meetings, all of those convenience things and to speed things up really makes sense. Now, if I have an office space and I have, say, a warehouse I can park trucks and get equipment, but I also have offices, now I can get a office admin, which is another expense, but brings it to another level. Now they can make calls out, they can book things, they can make your life easier. It's easier to get an admin when they're not working in your house. I mean, right now I am in an office and I have a home office, but it just doesn't make sense to be here because you can't have anybody show up or meetings or you can't have uh, an assistant or any help at all if somebody's sitting in your bedroom. That's weird. It's the same thing with the service business. So all of those benefits are great, but they don't pay for the facility. The, the, the facility itself, if you're like, hey, this is gonna take all of my extra money right now, it's not worth it. Because you're not making money, it's just an expense. But it's an expense as you get bigger, three, four, five trucks, now you have a place, it's an office, it's a, it's, you have to have it to run. And we talk about this all the time, but there is a cost of operation that a bigger company has that a smaller company doesn't. If it's just you and a truck, your costs are very low, right? You could even use your own vehicle if you really want. Your, your, your costs are very low, you have a job. But as you get bigger, when you get to two trucks, maybe you don't need an admin for two trucks. Three trucks, you do. So now you bring in the entire expense of an admin, right? So having three trucks is much more expensive than having two trucks, like exponentially more, because now you have to have an admin to run all of that. Now when you get to six, seven, now maybe eight trucks, you have to get another one. Like Then it starts going, but then every time you hit that, you drop back down. That's the same thing with the building. When you get a shop space, it is more expensive the minute you buy it than a year or two after you buy it because your company's gonna get bigger and then that expense is easier to roll in. You have to think about that going forward because profits in a business get rolled over into marketing. When you're in reinvestment, you're in a hyper accelerated growth period, your profits actually feed your growth, right? If you're profiting $1,000 this month or $10,000 this month, if you put that into advertising, those are huge differences, right? So now you're taking an expense like a shop or a building or a, um, offices or you're getting a storage unit, whatever it is, the amount of money you're spending on that is going to take away from your marketing, from your advertising. Now, never... Never, ever, ever, ever stop doing something like SEO in order to pay for a shop. Don't stop marketing or advertising. Don't be like, you know what? We're just not going to do any Facebook ads. We're not going to do any Google, Google local ads. We're going to pay for this. Don't, don't do that because now, not only are you creating another expense, you've just stopped or stunted your growth, which is how you're going to pay for that anyway. So it literally has to be something above and beyond and on top. And everybody always wants to, well, I don't know when the right time is. We're too busy in the spring, but then in the fall, there is no right time. But understand what time you get a property or a storage unit or anything. That timing 
is in what season? Because here's the other piece, is that if you're going into it like me, and you didn't really do your research well, and say you go through winter, what happens in December, January, February, sometimes March, depending on where you are? Okay, well, it's no big deal. I mean, we make some, but you know, okay, no, no, look at the profits. Do you have the profits set aside now to nest egg that? That is the big thing. Now, if you can get into a property, if the perfect timing allows, and you can get into it early spring, you can plan all year to save, I need three months of expenses, I want those on the books, because if anything happens and I don't make anything and whatever, it's just not a pressure. But you can't do that unless you have a bunch of cheddar sitting around middle of season. And you have to know the season you're getting into the location. Because that makes a huge, huge difference. If you're in there pre-spring, you know, I'm going to be cash rich next month. I'm going to be balling. I'll have a little cheddar, but that's then. Let me jump off topic real quick and let you know I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. What? <laughs> Shameless plug. Man, I, I, I love it though. People uh, come to me all the time for the first time and like, dude... I've been listening to the podcast for a while, and uh, the shameless blunt got me. Finally here. All right, put my order in. It's so amazing. Uh, really, genuinely thank you guys. It, uh, I, I want to make things easier for you. Uh, so call me, text me. You can even save a cart. Click save this cart and be like, Jersey, my cart is saved. You can even give me the cart number because it'll tell you. Uh, and I'll put the order in for you. It's no extra effort. It doesn't cost you a penny extra. You have me in your back pocket and you make my day. You make me happy when you let me put orders in. Big or small, it does not matter at all. If you're logged in, save it and text me 862-312-2026. By the way, if you're working in the field and you're like, yeah, pull your phone out. I'm gonna give you that number again in a second. But I would love nothing more than to be a rep. Also, uh, while you're getting your phone out, go to AWC mag.com get a subscription to the american window cleaner magazine it's amazing it's absolutely phenomenal i know you're awesome and i know that you love window cleaning so go and get the magazine because that's also something that i do and you guys are going to be so absolutely blown away it's phenomenal okay one more time on my number it's 862-312-2026 2026. Save it as Jersey because I'm the only Jersey you know. Probably. Anyway. I, I I say this all the time, by the way, on those. And I always tell people thank you. And every time I place orders, I say thank you uh, so much. And I say it so often that sometimes it gets forgotten. But genuinely, thank you. It is the reason I exist. It is uh, the reason I can have you know, a life. And uh, if any of you know about my mountains, uh, I am a huge mountain person. I love the mountains. And uh, I get to go up there because of you. So thank you. Okay. Anyway, shameless plug. Yeah, I got teary eyed. Not really, but we're good there. So we know how much is the time. We know the benefits. Uh, we know the costs, but, but the benefits are the next kind of piece is that we talked about kind of a little bit of the things, but think about this. If you have a space, how valuable it is to have then an admin. If you know anything about Chrissy Lambeau's business, if you've read the book, uh, by the way, it's free on WCR, so go and get it. But he had multiple phone girls. There was just a room that I think had two inbound people and three outbound people. And you're like, holy cow, how could you pay five people? Because every person who books work for you, if that's their entire job, they could book $10,000 a day. I mean, heck, maybe more. You're going to pay them a couple hundred dollars a day. Like, that makes a lot of sense. Like the bigger the beast, the more you have to feed it. But you can't do that when it's somebody in a room. Yes, you can be remote, but then there's a disconnect. How much are they doing? You don't really know. Remote's tricky and it's up to you and if you want to try that. Some of the VAs work remote. That's pretty good. Um, but even there, you, you know you're getting kind of milked for hours. 
So having that space where now you can have that, you can also have the admin role stuff getting done for, uh, like we had, uh, it's blasphemy, I know, but we had uh, what we called our Bible. And it was just these like trapper keeper, if you're old as me, but these little like um, zip up kind of binders. And inside the binder, there were the very cover sheet was the schedule for the day. Addresses, phone numbers, each one laid out in the times and when they were pricing and then I had all of my envelopes each envelope was for each homeowner and inside there was all my marketing stuff but also the bill my satisfaction forms were all filled out ready when they got to a job they knew who where when if they were late they knew who to call if they were done with the job they knew here's your we always call the bad news is the joke everything's good to go and here's the bad news right we can collect our invoices I get paid at every single job because I have it with me it's all there. Now, those things take time to print, put out stuff, and put together. Now, that could be an admin. If you have an admin working uh, alongside of you as opposed to remote, then you can have that done. But what about storage, right? What about all the ladders and extra gear? Maybe it's winter and you don't use your water fed. Take your water fed off the truck. If it's heated, set it off. Now it's right there. You can see it. You know the filters. I could put bins. They have those little like rolly carts with the bins. Fantastic. Get those and now you have extra rubbers. I always want extra rubber. I always want it's end clips if something's lost. I want backup um, backup uh, handles. I want backup channels. I want all of the extra things. We called it our store. It was on our second floor, like right above every, all the offices. But you can now have that on one of the sides. So when you go there with a glance, I can look at all the bins and see if I'm go oh, I'm running low on this. If I gotta place an order, I know instantly, because the stuff that's on the trucks is in use, I know my extras instantly. These are the efficiencies that allow you to run big businesses. You're like, well, how is this how, like I have clients, you know I do um private stuff with people, um, not a ton of people. Um, by the way, we're still booked up right now. Um, I don't talk about it too terribly often. Um, the spots go fast. But anyway, I have uh, multiple people that I'm coaching now that are now in the um, seven-figure range. Um, but they hit that mark. And I was talking with one of them. And I say... Uh, we hit that and I I don't, it, it feels slow. We feel slow. We look at the calendar and we're like, holy cow, it's the best month ever. Well, it's not that you feel slow. It's that you're not so stressed. And we all know that you'd be like, why am I working this hard for this little bit of money and this much stress and blah, 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 blah. Like when things are not running efficiently, there's so much that gets into that, that, that ruins the whole experience for us. When you have office space or shop space, you're taking a huge part of that because now I know all my gear. I can do my maintenance on my gear. I can do my um, um, uh, running water and winterizing and all of those things that I wanted to do, now I can do because I have the facility. If it's always in your truck, you can't do that. You don't really know what you have and you're losing that efficiency. Another thing that I always talk about is rescreening. We do rescreening, which by the way is great. You're always at the job, and I always have them try to upsell it. Would you like to have your house rescreen? Get them all nice, fresh, black, brand new screens. Uh, here's the price. We take the screens with us. We take care of them. And within seven days, we return them, install them, and you're good to go. Now I have a place that we could do that. So we always have screens by our screening table. Um, we always have those things. So every day I can make money with the building. If somebody's back early, they can do it. Lots of great things there. And then there's certain projects that you do that uh, we had some commercial projects that need scaffolding because of the way that the project is and the way that their safety protocols are. And where do you store that? So there's tons of really, really good things, right? Make it as organized as possible. Those are the benefits. But when you're picking a place, you need to know what you want to do there so you know what your needs are so you can get a building that matches. Because here's the other piece, is that when you're looking at property, maybe in your area it's very hard to find. Uh, maybe things are booked, maybe there's not a lot of great, maybe it's expensive, all of those things. But 
if you know what you're trying to do with the space, that's the best thing. I would do a pro con list and put all of the things you want to do on the pro and all the things that you do not want on the cons. And organize it from best or most important to not. Because here's the real truth is that you may not find a place that is absolutely perfect, but it may rank as like 95% perfect. But you have to know what it is. You can't just go in and be like, oh yeah, oh, this is, oh, I could, oh yeah, we could do this. Now you're planning an after. Well, are you doing that just because it allows to do that or is that something you needed to have done? Because the truth is when you're looking at property, you're gonna go through a lot of property. And you're gonna go in and go, yeah, this one's nice, but there wasn't any storage for the trucks. We just didn't have room. I could only store one or two trucks. I mean, maybe that's fine. No, if that is a priority, which I, I'm thinking it should be, a lot of the reason people get their own shop is because of that main reason. If that's not taken care of, then why are you spending thousands of dollars for something that's not doing what you really want? Okay, well, I want inside storage. That's fantastic. The inside storage that we had with uh, the front bay as you pull in is uh, a wash bay. That was fantastic because all of our trucks, especially in the winter, we did snow removal, would get sprayed down. They would get washed every time. That still rusted out like crazy, but it's there. My trucks always look nice. That wasn't something that I needed in a place, but when I found a place and that was one of them, I was like, that's great, I could do this. But all of my main needs were still met. We looked at a bunch of properties and there was places that were a lot more expensive that as soon as you get the itch, you're like, oh man, I'm gonna get a yes. Ah, oh, it's not perfect, but I'm gonna get. Don't rush this. Don't let that blind you to getting this facility. Figure out what you need or why you really want the facility. Because those reasons, and by the way, pros and cons, you have, I need storage for the vehicles, okay? The cons are, like things I don't want, is I don't want something that is in an unsafe neighborhood. If I'm gonna keep trucks and I'm getting broken into, like, that's cheaper there. Okay, well, I need at least a secure property then, even if it's in an insecure area, right? So my con may be I don't want an insecure place, or uh, one of them is this area has to be within five to 10 minutes from our interstate because we do a lot of work off of that. Like if it's not there and it's on the other side of town, that's a con. Because when you're putting all this together, there's a lot of projects that come up, and you're like, man, this place is not perfect, but, and then you look at it, and you go, well, you know, all of my top three needs and top three cons are all being met. This one that is not perfect, well, it's way down there. It's not that big of a deal. Then it makes sense. You're not going to find the absolute perfect place thousand percent it's just not it's just not gonna happen at your dollar amount maybe if it does it's fantastic but i've never seen it be where it's absolutely perfect but you want to have it in the rating remember i'm a huge fact and number person like if i can write things down with like a a, a statistic or a, a number you could track that right Two is more than one, always. So it's the same thing when you write down this, as you can see kind of where everything is, right? And uh, if you really want to nerd out, say you have uh, whatever you know list you have, put a little percentage or a number next to it. Like, oh, this is a 10, uh, this is a three, this is a one, and is a part of importance. So then you have a, a number, and then when you're looking at pros and cons in these other places, you put it all together and go, hey, this place is a uh, you know, 37, and this place is a 94. Like that way you can kind of really see, because the biggest thing is as soon as you go, man, I'm gonna get this thing, then guess what? You want it. If you want it, it blinds you from everything else. And that's what a lot of people do, is they want a thing, and then they're so interested to get into it, it's not perfect, and they're stuck. So make sure that even if it's not perfect, it's close to, and take time to put it together because again, sometimes you happen to find it on the first try, a lot of times you don't, right? But if you're thinking about getting a facility and it is in the cards and it makes a lot of sense, it's phenomenal. It's, it's absolutely one of the best things you could do for your business. 
It is solidifying you as a business uh, also. And then you get to go to work, which is great, just for the separation. So anyway, if you haven't yet, save my number. Let me put the orders through. Speaking of winter, it's coming into winter, so it's very slow for me. So I would love for you to put your orders in through me. Uh, no, I love that all the time. Um, big or small, it really doesn't matter. I know some people are like, oh, yeah, I placed an order without you. Or like they'll text me over the weekend and then um, like, oh, shoot, I put it in. Well, nothing ships on a Saturday or Sunday. So calm down, relax. If you text me, not only does that lock you in for any sales or discounts that are going on at that time, but you'll also get it done as soon as I get in the office on Monday. Like, don't, uh, don't put the order in yourself after mentioning it to me because then I get all excited and then I don't. Um, and also get the American Window Cleaner magazine. I didn't mention also, it's a monthly magazine, comes to your door. It comes with stickers also. So you get the uh, sticker sheet, all window cleaning related stickers every month to your door and it's amazing. So awcmag.com. Yeah, and uh, hopefully if you're in the market to buy a place, you find the perfect property, even if that's not possible, but at least close to. But more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.